it's time for... So it's been a while since we've done an official Phasmid Files video and I'm quite excited for this one because this is a species that although is available right now not that many keepers actually keep them. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So you'll have to excuse my voice today. I've got a bit of a sore throat, so I sound a bit croaky and a bit horrible. I hope you can push past that and just enjoy the footage for today. So it's been a while since we've done an official Phasmid Files video. Some of my previous stick and set videos I'm still gonna consider as Phasmid Files, even though it didn't say it in the title and Providing I remember they are all going into the Phasmid Files playlist. So <laughs> bear with me, you know I'm rubbish at producing playlists, right? So it, it will appear in there at some point. So today's video is about the, the Perifetes graniferum. Not actually sure if I've pronounced that right, but that's how I've always said it. And the reason I'm not sure is I've never heard anybody else talk about them. This is a really, really cool species, and I do believe there's eggs still going from somebody on eBay at the moment if you wanted to get your hands on these. I will also be selling probably one batch of Ova, but please don't message me about it. That will be done through one of my live streams where I sell on the Ova. Now, the reason I've chose to do this species today is because, unfortunately, my very last mature male has passed away. Now, this isn't a particularly long-lived species, but they do lay a fair whack of over. And the female in here, she's probably only got up to maybe another three months at most left of her life. And I don't plan on continuing keeping this species, just plan on distributing the ova. And the only reason I don't plan on continuing keeping them is because I am lowering my amount of bramble eaters in the collection and taking on ones that have either privet or more specialist food plants, just because they're the ones I didn't keep so much back along and I really wanna learn about them. So. I think we're going to just crack straight on then we'll, we'll have a look at the mature male first in detail because these are really really beautiful they've got a lot more color to them than the females but the females are still equally beautiful in their own way so let's learn about this species shall we so while you check out the beauty of this mature male let me tell you some notes so their PSG or Phasmid study group number is 357, so 357 if you wish to look them up. Their food plants are Bramble and also apparently uh, Pyracantha or maybe even Salal, but I've only fed my ones exclusively on Bramble. So this species was actually first described back in 1859 and it was first um, described as Phasma graniferum, which of course has now changed to the Periphetes. Um, they came into culture in 2010 um, and they come from the Philippines, so in Samar Island. So let's talk about this mature male specimen first off. Now mature males only really live for around about two to three months. So it's a really short lifespan, folks. Now I actually was unfortunate to have four mature males and only one female out of the batch of nymphs that I bought, but that's okay because we have a living female specimen to show you. So what is cool about this male? Let's have a little closer look at each body part and discuss that. So look at the end of this abdomen, this black, weird, rounded edge really really interesting shape right and they actually kind of almost wave these when they walk around it's really really cool so if we move up from that excuse the blurs this is a macro lens and it's a little bit hard to do freehand so we then move into this green coloration followed by orange 
Now this is a very striking orange. It does have a glossy sort of finish to it, but it's actually very granulated if you look properly. And we move up from the orange and we go back into that aquary green head. Really, really pretty. Now that antenna, reasonably long as you can see here. Um, this one only actually has one left. And each of the joints has that slightly more blue aqua colour. So you can see where it moves on from what well you would probably call a shoulder. Moving down to each joint. The rest of the legs are almost black, navy blue. And each joint has that aqua colour. And I just think that is really, really stunning. Look at that sort of knee joint there. Really cool. Down to the feet. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now I don't want you to have to just stare at a dead specimen, so for the rest of the information we will be looking at an adult female. So here is an adult female. Now the lifespan of these is around four to seven months. So it really does kind of vary depending on how well they're kept. But yeah, she will be putting on some age now. They start to lay that over only within a couple of weeks after maturity. I will show you the over in a bit. It's very, very tiny. It's actually quite hard to find amongst the poo of the enclosures. They're really abnormal shape too. Now I am struggling to get some focus on this girl so you will have to bear with me. Now she might seem a little bit more boring than the male maybe to you but she isn't to me and I will show you why in just a second. There is something very um, different about females of this particular species. But before we go into that let's just look at what we can see here first. So with a little zoom in she's got quite a plump abdomen in comparison to the rest of her body there's probably eggs in there ready to go they lay quite a lot of eggs um, but obviously I only had one female so I haven't witnessed it now reports say that they can lay up to 50 a week mine is not doing quite that much um, in fact quite a bit less than that um, but that's what the report said that I read on this species but perhaps I'm wrong I will actually have a proper dig through the enclosure and see how many I could find and I'll update you guys when I do that live stream on if I was wrong now you can see although she also has long antennae they are a little bit shorter in comparison to the male if you compare it to the size of what his body was focus camera focus well let's switch to the macro and see if we can get a focus that way yes that's all right so again we have a metallic sort of green coloration with those same aquary blues but going all the way almost across the legs there really really beautiful same with the start of the antenna same granulated body going along but this time in a more acre emerald green but I love the color of the legs now I'm going to take the macro off again for a bit because I want to show you what is so special about the appearance of these but here this is what I want to show you she has a yellow underside. Now I'm actually blocking the light. Let me see if I place her down, if she'll stay on her belly for a moment. Nope, she doesn't want to. And I don't want to cause her much stress, but you can see it there, that orangey yellow underside. Really, really interesting. Now she was struggling to grip on the shiny plastic surface of the bottom. So I'm gonna let her grab onto some leaves, but she's still in fidget mode. You see, if I let her go, she drops she's an absolute nightmare so yeah if you are getting this species prepare for awkwardness when it comes to changing food plants because they will literally flop and throw a fit all over the place um, so if you're a keeper that that freaks out by kind of fidgety movements this will not be an animal for you but if you're used to keeping fast mids or that doesn't bother you then that's fine but you will have to be careful obviously they can survive a drop they're naturally adapted to do that but we don't want that to continue happening you can see now she's perfectly still now she's on the ground she's feeling safer she's feeling that the predators now disappeared and normally she'd be sat there in, in undergrowth so she would be camouflaged 
but yeah she is fascinating right now these guys mate quite frequently but unlike some species the male does just kind of walk off afterwards he's not going to stay on her back the entire time um, it's quite funny to watch them mate especially with his larger flatter black abdomen and then hers it's, uh, it's just an interesting observation actually but um, I had four males I think to this female and I had to separate them now and again because they were just harassing her it was just male after male after male trying to get to this female and it was just causing her some stress so when the first first two males um, died I was actually grateful because she was not being pestered so much but now they're all gone she can live out her life continue laying the last of her eggs until she dies now being a Filipino species, they do tend to share one thing in common and that is that they like airflow but they also require humidity. So that's always a little bit of a pain to deal with. What I recommend is either keeping kitchen towel on the bottom and keeping that constantly moist. So you spray it till it's a bit wet, leave it to dry out before you spray it again to stop mold growth. Um, and then just continue that on and it will raise the humidity of the tank or alternatively put an actual substrate layer down and keep that damp the only problem with that is the fact that you will not be able to find those eggs I can promise you now those eggs will be near impossible to find on a substrate layer bottom but if you just plan on letting them hatch naturally that won't be an issue Look, she stayed perfectly still ever since she dropped to the ground there. So I guess we should look at the over now. I'm going to do that bit very, very quickly. And I'll tell you how I would keep that over if I was keeping it for myself. Ta-da! You can see now why that will be difficult to find in substrate, right? It's an abnormal shape. But put in amongst poo or soil, you're not going to find these babies. Now, it was really hard to get this to focus, so I'm not going to show you all angles. But, uh, yeah, that's it. That's a little bit of over. Now, there is one more. There you go. You can see a different angle by looking at that one. Really, really cool, but they're really, really small. So the lid that you're seeing this on is on one of those tiny, tiny lids for those tiny, tiny rubs. And by tiny, I mean the ones that fit in those tiny little stacks. So these are really, really small over. So there's how you can see how small the lid is. Right, that tiny over there. Now you have to excuse the mess on the table. It has been a cleaning day, hence all the bramble everywhere. And some of my, my phasmid notes are over here. Um, now the one thing I've read now I've not reared these from eggs but on breeding reports it does state that there is a massively high mortality rate in the nymphs so a lot of nymphs do not make it so if you're only buying eggs guys I would get between well I would get around 60 50 to 60 eggs um, to start this off because if you go for the average of 30 you are going to be less likely to be successful and you'll just end up with a few and then you also have to try and keep those nymphs then alive as well so yeah you really want to go for more eggs of these they're pretty good at standard room temperatures so you don't have to worry about an additional heat source or anything like that with this species and I personally like to keep these ones eggs on vermiculite um, just because it holds and retains the moisture levels but does prevent molding now I'm not sure how prone these eggs are to molding but the poo of this species is very prone to molding very very prone to molding so when you've got eggs mixed in with the poo that's going to be awkward so I think if you keep these on a substrate bottom guys you're really gonna have to add spring tails or, or some form of cleanup crew there Right, I'm going to get this girl put back. Oh, she's doing it again. She's doing it again. Look at that. Look, look at the complete hissy fit these guys have. Sorry, I cut off because she dropped again. So yes, I wouldn't recommend these for children or for stick insects you want to handle because this is going to continuously happen 
and although it might be funny to watch it is actually stressing the animal so I actually picked her up then to put her back but she's causing me some mayhem so I'm going to do that off the camera and you're going to want an enclosure at least 30 centimeters in height for these bigger the better but 30 centimeter minimum um, from around sub adult stage onwards so I think we're going to call this an end to the video I have noticed that my uh, microphone is brushed against the bramble a couple of times so I'm hoping that hasn't disturbed this too much and along with my croaky voice it's probably not the best of phasmid files but I hope you enjoyed it regardless um, and yet yeah, as I said I'm going to try and sell some of these eggs um, on a live stream so keep your eyes out for that if I ever do a live stream it will be on a Wednesday but it will not be the Wednesday coming up guys so I'm going to go and pop her back. Thank you all for watching. Oh, good. I'm, I'm, I'm having to actually enclose my hand so she doesn't drop here. Come on, gal. Back in you go. <sighs> awkward, awkward species to try and do a Fasmid Files video on. But yeah, shame about the males, eh? Where have I put that body of that male? I'll find it in a bit. One top tip as well, if your stick insects do die guys and you keep isopods, um, chuck the bodies in with the isopods um, because they get a nice source of protein plus they get the plant matter that the stick insect has been eating. They'll also even eat the stick insect poo. So it's really, really useful if you're an isopod keeper or even a cockroach keeper as well actually alongside uh, keeping stick insects and another top tip is their poo is actually very good fertilizer for your garden a natural one so yeah I'm gonna call it an end here please let me know if you enjoyed this video please let me know if you want more phasmid files videos coming up well there's gonna be regardless I'm just talking I need to shut up goodbye thanks for watching take care <laughs>